This is James Curran, and I'm introducing our group for Web API. It consists of Shane Ryan, Graham Doherty, and myself. And so we've built a front end uh, React GUI here for the Web API, and you can see it defaults to the login screen. So since we haven't used this before, we're going to go and register. And then when I register, I'm going to put in my name. I'm going to put in an address that doesn't really matter. And then I put an email. And I'm going to put a password. Okay, so then when I click register, this is hooked up to a HTTP post. And that's going to post that details over to the API and make an account. So when I'm back here at the login screen, I can now log in with james at gmail.com and use my password. And I am here at the front page. Let me just bring this down for a moment. So when I'm at the front page, this is the core, or this is the, the front of our app. And so from here, you can do several things. First of all, I've only made a customer profile, so I need to add myself an account. I do it by clicking a create account here. And this pop up pops up and says, tells me that the account's been created. So let's just verify that. I can go in and check my balance. And you can see I have one account. That's the one just created. Balance of zero. Enter so my number in here, 100635. And I want to put in $100. So I lodged the cash and I'm taking back here. Let's see if it was successful. It was brilliant. So let's create an, another account. And go in. We can see the balance is zero for the newly created account. Let's withdraw from the first account. Let's only withdraw 50 from that. And just verify that that worked. It did, so it's gone down by 50. And if we go back in here, let's do a transfer. What's the, what's the account ID? Yeah. Okay, so I can make a transfer by entering the account I want to take it from. So that's uh, 1635. I want to take 25. And I want to put it over to myself, so my customer ID is 7, and the account I want to put it into is that newly created one we just made, so let's, this should transfer $25 over to the customer on uh, with the ID 7, and in the account 100110. Uh, this is done by a a HTTP post which lodges to one account and then withdraws from the other. So now when I press transfer, that should all execute. When I go back and I look at my balances, you can see it was, this one had 50 and this one had zero. So and now I discussed the most challenging part of this project and that was the web front end. We really strive to have a good front end um, and just sort of do some basic HTML forms and stuff like that. Uh, we made a full React GUI, we made a nice build system in WebStorm using Webpack and it transpiled it down into ES5 and uh, used components and stateless functions. A really well architected app, just almost over architected for what a simple web API is. So we struggled with making HTTP gets and HTTP post asynchronously and working with React one-way data flow whereby data can only go down the tree, not up. And so you have to set up a whole bunch of asynchronous calls whereby when you do the HTTP get, it actually, rather than returning the value, will do the callback you passed into it. And it's just a different way of writing code that uh, it proved quite challenging through this. Okay, so now we are going to run through all of the different API calls possible through Postman uh, on the back end. So we're going to give a quick run through of the back end, running all the API requests here on Postman. This is a simple get request which returns all the customers currently in the that are currently members of the bank. You'll see the results down here. 
where all the customers are displayed, their accounts are displayed, and all of their transactions are displayed. Um, uh, so this API endpoint is to remove customer by ID, uh, it's a delete request, and it returns the deleted customer as a JSON object here, but also removes it from the bank account. Um, so we have a get by ID request that we can use that just gets the customer by ID. So I have ID number one put in. And if I scroll down, you can see uh, customer ID. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see down here, the customer ID is one. We also have another one, it's a get request, get by email. So when I send that, it returns the customer matched by email. And if I scroll all the way down, you'll see that the email in the get request matches the email in the JSON object. We also have a put request. This um, updates the address of a user. So if I go into the body of the request and change the address from Fake Street to Maple Drive and I send the put request, the returned object will show that the address has changed, as you can see down here. The next request is to get accounts. So I can get all the accounts for customer by ID. So all the accounts for customer number one are returned below. These accounts also show a list of transactions by each one. Moving on, we have, we can get a specific account from the list. So customer number one, we can search by account number, account number 1111, we search it here in the get request. The next one is for creating accounts. So we can create a current account for customer number one just by hitting send. Sorry, it's a post request. So we, we created a current account with an empty list of transactions and current balance of zero. The account number is generated randomly. <laughs> There's also a post, requ post request that does the same thing for savings accounts. So the next request we have is another delete request. We can remove accounts by their account number. So if I put in the account of the savings account, account number of the savings account I just created and send this delete request, it returns that account and that account has now been removed from the customer's list of accounts. Um, here's a request to retrieve the balance on a specific account. So the balance for account 1111 is 90 euro right now. You can see down here. If I want to get a list of transactions for accounts, it's another get request. Uh, I have the account number here and I just do forward slash transaction. And the results is every transaction that's happened on the account. You can see lodgement and withdrawals, debits and credits down below. So I have three more post requests to go through. There's a lodgement. So this one uses a query parameter and uh, submits a lodgement piece an object through Lodgement. So if I hit send on this post request, I should see transaction after the same thing getting returned, but with extra fields like modifier, credit, and the date and the balance post transaction are attached. The next one I'm going to do is withdrawal. It works pretty much the same way as a lodgement, but in reverse. So if we scroll down, we'll see that it's a debit instead of a credit, and the post balance is returned down to 90 because I just subtracted the 100. Lastly, we have a, tran a transfer. So in the in the URI, we can see we have different query parameters. We have type equals transfer, recipient cost ID is the customer's ID, and recipient account ID is the account we're transferring to. In the body, the, the transaction is the same as a lodgement or a withdrawal, except we just note transfer as a description and the transaction type. When we hit send, this post request is going to withdraw from one account and it's going to lodge into the specified account. 
and we'll be able to see this when we do a cat for all the customers. So that's all the uh, API requests that we have built um, with the pull request and the delete request, post and gets. We've completed a full CRUD functionality required by the API. If I do one final get request uh, for customers, we can scroll down and we can see that all of the transactions I made, like the lodgements and the transfers and the withdrawals I just made, show up in the list of transactions for that account, 1111. But if we go down to customer number two, we should see that the two transfers have gone through the amount of 10 euro and the post balance for that account has been updated. Uh, that's everything for the back end and the API requests. So my name is Shane Ryan. Um, for this project, I worked entirely on the back end, um, working completely on all the API requests uh, with some help from Graham. And that's everything I did. I, I helped write the document as well and consulted with James when he was making the UI. It's James Curran and my contribution to the project was mostly GUI focused uh, with Graham. I helped uh, create the React GUI and build environment and also consulted with Shane in the early parts uh, of the back end just to make sure the front end and the back end linked up fine. Uh, my name is Graham. I helped Shane with the API and then after that I helped James with the GUI.